well. Ladies and gentlemen and attendants, good morning. And uh, let me express my gratitude to be here at this annual 22nd symposium on the topic of religion, law, and social sustainability. Uh, around the 12th century, Mongolia has their own independent law, and Genghis Khan has a law named um, religious freedom for them. And so all the religious churches are free to be equal, and so uh, none of them will be dominant or more favored. So it also shows uh, the uh, religious freedom at the time. So since 1921, independence of Mongolia, there was the first constitution. At that constitution, there was um, all the monks and the religious beliefs, different religious beliefs, and but there was no choice for the freedom to choose their religion. So, so at that time, the every third man was a Buddhist monk. So probably that's why there was a limit. But in 1940, there was a constitution they expressed that they can have a um, freedom to choose what the kind of religion they want to believe in. And so next, the first, there was no uh, freedom to choose. But in 1960, the, uh, there was uh, the uh, ability to choose for their religious beliefs. And so in the Mongolian history, they was opened up since um, the, in 1921. So you can see that from our law. Uh, in 1920, 1992, democracy was introduced and there was a new, new constitution which proclaimed the religious freedom. And everyone can uh, have a right to choose to believe in something. And so a Mongolian democracy helped uh, that. And in the last 25 years, it was really opened up how they can believe and what kind of activity they can be involved in a church. So uh, there is a statistic research in, uh, in Mongolian Science Academy has the researchers that. And so in around the 1970s, which means before the democracy, during the communism, there was a research. And so everybody um, who involved with that research, the 80 to 85 percent says they don't, they are atheists and no relations with any church. But in 1994, after the democracy in Mongolia, and the same research, and also the uh, third of, uh, of the quarter of the participants, which was 71.1 percent, says they admitted they have some kind of religious beliefs and actively engaged in church activity. So from this research, we can see the people probably believed in something secretly and didn't really proclaim their uh, religious beliefs, but it opened up after the democracy. So let's see about the today's uh, situation. And so in a, in a capital city, <clears throat> and there's a research in uh, 2015 in March, there was a, a questionnaire. And so there's a more than a dozen different religious beliefs in a capital city. And there's a, the actively um, involved with the many different social um, uh, people in the, in the country. So mostly the Buddh, uh, there's uh, many the Christian churches and 25.4% are the Buddhist monasteries. And there's uh, like a, uh, 22 different Buddhist church and uh, 72 Christian churches and there's a Hindu or Islam, Islam religion. There's a five different churches in them. And so there's on, it's on a website of the Mongolian government. You can uh, take a look if you want to. So how they get the approval of Mongolian uh, government? 
So uh, it's, there is a law of, about the relationship between the government, religious organizations, and so if if they want to open a religious organization in Mongolia, you have to get the permission from the uh, meeting of the citizens of delegation. It's like a board. And so those board members will uh, take a look at that. And so there's a, uh, you can request uh, uh, that uh, approval and you can have the certificate which is valid for one year and which can be extended annually depending on a decision from the board of citizens delegates so uh, the one th until three years that they can get the approval of the certificate so following so let me explain how they uh, uh, have ability to come and serve an mission in the country. So if you're a foreigner uh, in the law of Mongolia, there's a, the different visas you can request. If you are requesting a visa uh, from Mongolia, the religious uh, interest, there's a two different visas, ACH, and that is the visa for foreigners. Uh, so at the immigration agency in Mongolian, the Foreign Affairs Ministry. And so it's for 90 days you can uh, get the visa approval to enter Mongolia, and also you can get the extension for 30 days. And the next one is uh, like uh, the F HG, which is that you can have work in Mongolia, have a job, hold a such job. And so it, this, this visa is uh, approved from us, also same, the agency which I work for. So if it's a, for one year a visa. And so if they want to, or the, if the uh, organization requested, you can uh, extend for a year, another year. In, in uh, this, um, uh, this policy was uh, uh, controlled by uh, the force labor force exchange agency. The Mongolian is a the court system to uh, allows how many foreigners they can invite and they can how many foreign employees they can have. So the government uh, published a policy and control it that way. So on this part, the current policy says there's a very, uh, the, the percentage is very low. It's like a 5% of the uh, employees can be a foreigner or alien. And so just up to 5%. So if you have a uh, hundred people, there's only five foreigners can be allowed. And so there's a new 2016 uh, policy is working on and um, uh, going to come out in November. So we cannot guess how many percentage it will be at that time. So, uh, and the religion is uh, become a very influential in the Mongolian government and especially the very positive results coming out. So Mongolian government is looking into the uh, conflicts between the religious and the, between government and the religious feeling. I'm I'm sorry, but I'm not really a religious specialist, so I cannot really give you the religious information. But here's okay. Here's the it's a very the professors who knows about Mongolian religion. So thank you for your attention.